What's going on everybody? I'm coming at you with a different video and today I am here for a screening of Spider-Man 3, okay? <sighs> yeah, uh, last week I saw Spider-Man 2, week before I saw uh, the first Spider-Man, and now uh, we're here watching Spider-Man 3, okay? I have not seen Spider-Man 3 in many, many years, okay? I think I might have only seen the movie once or twice, okay? And I remember, I remember when it came out, the release date was May 4th, 2007, okay? And back then, in 2007, they didn't have like Thursday night shows at 7 p.m. We had midnight screenings. So you had to not only wait till midnight, but you had to stay up until like two, three o'clock in the morning until you got out. And uh, my memory of Spider-Man 3 is unfortunately not a positive one, okay? Um, uh, two comic book movies that really disappointed me was one, Spider-Man 3, and uh, the second one was uh, Superman Returns in 2006. And what sucks is uh, they were like one year apart, so Superman Returns and then Spider-Man 3 so I'm, I'm going into this movie uh, with a lens of uh, many years that have passed. I still feel some type of way about it. I'm going to come out of it um, probably still thinking strongly about it. I, I, who knows? Maybe I grow to like it a little bit more. I kind of doubt it. But yeah, this was, there was, uh, I believe, let's see, it was like three years in between Spider-Man 2 and Spider-Man 3. And uh, you got Tobey Maguire back. You got Kirsten Dunst back. James Franco. And then you got Topher Grace as Eddie Brock. And then you got Thomas Hayden Church as uh, Flint Marco, also known as the Sandman. Okay. I'm going to save uh, some commentary till after the movie. But, uh, because I, I feel like that's going to, after watching the movie, it's going to just make me have a stronger conviction in, in sharing what I'm about to share. But yeah, this was the movie uh, right before I graduated high school. Uh, I was a senior in high school, 2007. So this was a very, uh, yeah, very pivotal movie. And uh, what a time, what a time between then and now, so... Yeah, still at the theater in uh, Rialto, and uh, I'm gonna go inside and uh, check it out. <laughs> oh man, here's the thing, like one, one last thing I gotta say. This is kind of like going back to a wound. Like it's, it's like going back to a wound that like that hurts you. And this was one of those movies that, that just deeply disappointed me because the thing is, back then, you had to wait like two or three years. And this was an event movie. This was way before the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I and I, I appreciate that aspect of that time where th things took time for, uh, yeah, th things took time for it to, to be released. And now you just got them like one after the other. And, and no, 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 I, I, I don't like that, but this is literally going back yeah, to a wound and I'm gonna try to look at it from the best perspective that I can today. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll talk more about it afterwards. So let's, let's, let's finally do this. <laughs> All right, so uh, I just got out of the theater. <sighs> I, I don't recall when was the last time I had seen Spider-Man 3, but um, it might have been 17 years uh, since I have seen that. When I saw Spider-Man 3 in 2007, I was 18 years old, okay? 17 years later, I'm 35, and um, a lot of things went over my head. And since I've lived a life since then, a lot of things uh, resonate a little differently as an adult and I think there's a lot of adult themes 
Is the movie flawed? Yes. It does get sloppy in the third act and I mean, here's the thing, in comparison to superhero movies that have come out after that, it's actually, it's a lot better than, than I thought. Uh, it's a lot better than I remember it to be, most definitely. Um, yeah, it's, it's still flawed, it's still flawed. Um, the uh, disco Spider-Man scene didn't bother me as much. And uh, there's a lot of uh, like themes about like the shadow self and all that type of stuff that kind of like just resonated differently. It was just interesting how all these bad things happened when he had the symbiote. I still think they uh, they dropped the ball on Venom. Uh, personally, what I would have done is I would have cast Thomas Hayden Church as Eddie Brock and maybe Topher Grace as Flint Marco. And I mean, here, I mean, the Harry Osborn arc makes sense as well. It's just that it's just too much. But I will say though, um, being in the entertainment business and understanding like actors and actresses, the dilemma that Mary Jane faced in this movie made a lot more sense. And uh, so it was nice to see that contrast with Mary Jane in her acting career with Spider-Man. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it, it's, it's a little, um, it's still, it, it, it seems like they tried to jumble up uh, a lot of things in it. They dropped the ball on some things like Venom, but overall it's, it's not as bad as I remember. I have to say this movie aged much better over time. And you can tell when they made Spider-Man 3 that they had Spider-Man 4 in mind. And the thing is, is I wanted I think it's safe that they didn't give the movie that I wanted, but I guess they gave the movie that they thought was needed. Ironically, tonight specifically, this was the movie that I really needed to see tonight because it really made me realize like how you, your life experiences can shape the way you look at movies you haven't seen in a long time. But, uh, but yeah. Um, when it was announced that uh, they were not going to do Spider-Man 4, I'm, I'm, I'll be very honest, I was in my apartment in Burbank, I had my Blackberry, and I was crushed. They were gonna have, uh, I think, John Malkovich as the Vulture, and Hathaway as Black Cat. Um, rumors of Bruce Campbell as Mysterio. Um, if they ever did a Spider-Man 4 with uh, Sam Raimi, I would definitely be interested uh, to see that. And here's here's what I'll say. Sam Raimi's Spider-Man 4 is the only Marvel movie that I would want to be a part of. Want, okay? That's the key word, want. But uh, but yeah, overall, I had a, had a, had a really good time. And um, I'm still contemplating whether I want to see the Amazing Spider-Man movies and the rest of the Spider-Man movies, but yeah, I gotta take a piss. But yeah, I, I had I had a really good time. I had a good time. It was a really good learning experience, especially uh, with what I've learned about storytelling. And that's another thing too about Spider-Man Three. A lot of the stuff made sense. Was a little was it a little bit extra in the soap opera stuff? Yeah, but it made sense. That's the thing. It made sense. And because it makes sense, like I can appreciate it more. Versus back then, I was just like just fixated. Like you know, I'm 18 years old. I'm fixated on what's wrong with the movie. I gotta say, the whole um, Flint and Marco uh, being the real killer of Uncle Ben, I, I still, I still don't, uh, I still don't fuck with that. Um, yeah. I mean, the visual effects are, I mean, are still overall like pretty good, but um, that's it. Yeah, guys, um, that's pretty much my commentary. Uh, I would love for Sam Raimi to have one more crack at Spider-Man 4 if it's going to be good. If it's going to be good. Otherwise, don't even do it. Don't do it. But uh, with all the box office uh, income of the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies, you gotta wonder 
and you gotta think that they're really talking about making that happen, so. Do it, do it, Sony. Do it, do it, do it. And, um, yeah, and one, one more thing too, like I wanted to add was, um, I saw the Evil Dead movies like, like very recent, and it seems like that there's a little bit of uh, influence of like Army of Darkness by adding like a little bit more like humor into like the third film. But uh, it's, it's not as terrible as, as I remember, not, not at all. I saw it at a midnight showing and I was 18, 17 years later, I have a much broader opinion on the movie. And I actually think it's a movie that's aged well. But anyways, that, that's up. I'm rambling on and on and on. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys like this video, like this video. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thanks again for watching. And as always, I will see you on the next one.